Now something we don't always see in the country, we got some booted cars here, lots of tickets. Not looking like a good morning in DC for some parking situations. So we are gonna go to dinner at that pizza place down there. So we are at a fancy pizza restaurant and I don't know what it all means. So to keep it, well a couple of us are getting calzones. I'm gonna get this meatball sandwich, meatballs and marinara sauce and uh, it has pizza dough involved, okay. We're gonna walk a lot over the next few days. We're in DC by the way. And let's see here. So many things. So lots of really neat things in this restaurant where we are. I'm gonna get over there and show you. They have a pizza oven and a bunch of beautiful tile, which makes me want to tile the whole kitchen like that, right, Tobin? Yeah. <laughs> and we got fancy water going on here. Fancy pizza, calzone, calzone, another fancy pizza. Fancy salad, fancy meatball sandwich, baby on my lap. We're doing it, Tobin. So check out the beautiful tile and then look at this oven. And that magnificent. And then also this beautiful table. Just gorgeous. And this is very interesting. Not a whole lot going on here. So we are heading toward the Ronald Reagan building. They have parking that I usually use if we don't take the metro into DC and it's right near the National Mall and everything. So that is where we're headed. We did the valet parking at the hotel where we're staying at, but we are making our way to a little bit closer parking for the day. That's right, Tobin, we're doing it. We're going to the National Archives, which is super cool. We've never been in here before. So, Tobin's sleeping. I don't think I can take too many pictures in here. We shall see. So we cannot do any photography inside, which is understandable, but that's the National Archives. We got to see the Declaration of Independence and Bill of Rights and all kinds of, I think it was the 1297 Magna Carta. It's very interesting. Coffee. We're also getting pretzels. We priorities. I'm not complaining. Oh boy. We also just met a YouTube viewer out here in the wilderness. So we've got the Lincoln Memorial down there, and then we have the White House over there, and then we have that's the Capitol building down yonder. Yay. Hi friends, good morning. As you see, we are spending a few days in Washington, D.C. Now, you may know this, you may not. We are actually not too far from D.C. Both sides of my family, my mom's side and my dad's side of the family, are a long time from Northern Virginia and different parts of Virginia in general. 
Um, so areas right around DC like Fairfax and Vienna and Falls Church, uh, Fairfax where they just had the Johnny Depp Amber Heard <laughs> trial. That used to be the country and that's where uh, my mom used to ride her pony to school and all that stuff. So anyway, growing up around this area and being really close to DC, I imagine it's what it's like uh, for folks who live not too far from New York City. You just get used to going in. It's probably how it is. And so the same has been for us with the DC area. Now before the pandemic, for years and years and years, um, even living out in the Virginia country, we still brought our kids up here two to three times a year. I would either drive my vans in and park in DC and we'd do the National Mall and monuments and National Zoo and such, or for fun, we would go and park at the Vienna Metro and take the Metro in just to get the fun little train ride and such. So since the pandemic, I'm looking for my eyebrow mascara and several of you saw me use this in a recent video and asked me what it was. So we'll talk eyebrow mascara in a minute because this mama learned a new trick. So it's been two, two and a half years since we've been up to the DC area. But I wanted to take the teens in and something that we've never done is actually, because again, it's, it's local to us, um, we've never actually gotten a hotel and like stayed here for a few days and been tourists. We've come in to do the, the day trip tourist thing. Sorry, Tobin's fussing in the background because he hears me talking. Um, and there's other folks with him, but still. Mom is talking to her help in that bathroom. We've done the day trip thing. We just had Zion's high school graduation and his birthday, so something special fun. My mom and I have brought the teens into the city for several days, and we've been doing the museums longer, you know, eating here locally, staying at a hotel, all the fun stuff. And one of the things in plan the trip I said is, you know, people come from all over the world to visit DC and we're so close, we should do a little mini trip and here we are. So some things that are new to me that I'm still getting used to. There are very interesting museums now here that have opened up in the last few years that you have to get tickets for in advance. And it may have been like this before, but I've always focused on the National Mall in general. And so I learned when we got here, the Holocaust Museum, which I'm gonna have to get tickets and we'll have to plan this as a day trip. The Holocaust Museum is scheduled out a month in advance when I just, when I looked for tickets the other day and I didn't realize that. So we're not able to that this time. That'll just have to be an older kid focused day trip here, maybe this fall. And also all these years, I've never actually been up in the Washington Monument, the big pencil tower as we call it. And so I went to get tickets for that and that was, uh, the tickets are free. These are supposed to be DC tips for you. Tickets are free for the Washington Monument. Tickets are also free for the Holocaust Museum, but you have to reserve them in advance. So do that before you come to DC. I know another friend of mine is coming this fall. She's asking me for tips, so here you go. Um, the Spy Museum, which I've never been to, and that's what we're trying to get in on this trip. Museums that we haven't been able to take a lot of time in in recent years, like the National Gallery of Art. That's another one that's free and there's no tickets needed, but it's hard with a bunch of little kids. Usually with the younger kids, we just, we walk through and we see Monet, but we don't stay for, for oh, that's in the little poem. We see Monet, but we don't stay. Uh, we don't hang out long. Um, we just kind of breeze through the experience and move on to other. Another new museum, the Museum of the Bible, that had tickets available. I got us tickets for the Spy Museum, and that's on the other side of the mall. So today we're gonna do the Spy Museum. We're probably gonna go in the original Smithsonian Castle House. That hasn't always been open when we're here, and that's open today. Um, the Museum of the Bible, it's just gonna have to be another trip. There's so much to see and do. Today is our last full day here, and then this evening, we're gonna end back up at home. So with traffic, it might be two hours to get home. There's a lot of traffic out of DC into 66. I'm gonna go help with my baby now. We're gonna get out of this hotel and get this show on the road. Down the hall. Going down here, they've been keeping our van for us. There's our hotel, we were up on the 10th floor. So we are about, we're 1.8 miles from the Spy Museum. We're over on the Capitol Hill side of things. So I'm gonna get us over to that and then I'm gonna try a new parking garage over there. Whee. 
We are here. We found parking. Okay, so this is funny, and I just said I was feeling irritable, and now I feel blessed. So they had me park my stroller, but then they had these little museum strollers that we could use. So that's so nice, because carrying a big baby through a museum is not fun. <laughs> Wow, wild elevator ride. Enjoy your visit, but remember, it's wild. Okay, this is pretty serious. We're gonna tap our card. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to my card. Don't blow your cover, uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, I'm being choosed, I'm being timed. I was gonna do the kittens. Favorite picture, I don't know, that. Let's see what everyone else is getting. Oh, <gasps> yes. And Mayor. Okay. What? Okay, I gotta remember it. So I think they've got this whole thing as a a game. <laughs> I didn't know we were playing a game. Undercover mission engaged. Okay. Interesting. Tobin and I had to come out of a little uh, spy movie early, but this is fascinating history in here. James Lafayette, Victor at Yorktown. I have never been to Yorktown, and that's another field trip location in Virginia. We should definitely do Yorktown and Jamestown. And even though I lived down there for a long time, I didn't have a bunch of homeschooling kids, so another, another upcoming field trip. There we go, Chesapeake Bay, the French Fleet, Cape Henry, James River. We lived on the James River. There's Hampton and Newport News. Alrighty, so we've been to the spy museum. We learned all about international spies. We had lunch at Subway, and now we're coming to the other side of the mall. See, we don't usually get over on this side very often at all, but there's the Washington Monument for reference. And so, anyway, we're gonna work on doing this side. It's about three, and things seem to close down about five or 5.30, but we should be able to get in this building here before we get to jump into some traffic. So there's the National Museum of African Art. A whole lot going on down here. There we go, that's all the square footage we need. that we're in. Apparently they had buffalo grazing in the front yard. Love it. Wow, we got a peacock up there. Oh my, look at this window. This reminds me of the Hearst Castle. Very neat. Sorry, I'm really impressed with the ceilings and windows in here. Very beautiful. So this is interesting. This museum is underground. Pretty cool. We were 
appreciating all this various artwork. And then we were just informed that all of this is wood block print and ink. Isn't that amazing? So everything has to be carved first. I thought we were looking at, you know, like hand drawn, but it's an, another intricate layer, layer on top of that. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, it's raining, but we're heading home. Got our, we have our nice little DC 66 traffic for the full experience. I'll start giving you traffic reports. We got two hours and two minutes until home, 115 miles. Hi, we're not in DC anymore. We've been home for several days. Let's see, it is Sunday today. We got home Wednesday night, but We've just had a real, what I call a yeehaw time since getting home Wednesday night through today. You can tell I have a cold. It's almost gone now though. I'm like I'm on the, the upswing with it. So I'm dressed today and we're gonna go clip some chicken wings. I don't know how much farther I'm gonna get after that, but again, all day yesterday I was in my pajamas and just didn't move off the couch. So I feel like I can get a few things done today. And this is my version of resting. <laughs> so, um, I will probably end up back on the couch in a few hours, but I want to get up and move around while I can. My cold is not all that has gone on, uh, but it's just been nonstop since we got back. So the water is not turned on now. We're, we're giving it a little break while we go to clip the chicken wings, but uh, the younger kids have loved this splash pad that I got at Costco the other week. So. I don't remember if it was $27 or $34, but I mean, even Tobin's able to get in there and water squirts up around the sides. I'm sure I'll show it to y'all later, but it's been a, a big win. And uh, again, since I've been sick, I had um, kiddos water the garden for me last night, but I just need to get out here and uh, get some things done. And I thought a good place to start would be getting these chicken wings clipped. We only clip one side. And uh, if you clip both sides, they'll actually gain strength and still learn to fly over the fence. We've got our big fence here. That's really a protection for them. It's almost an acre that's fenced. Lots of green area for them. And so they're able to free range, but yet not free range the whole property. So by clipping their wings, they'll be able to enjoy their acre fenced in area every day, but not get out. When they get out over this fence, we're not able to, you know, necessarily keep an eye on them or protect them. They're fine in this fence because the dogs are here and stuff. Long story short, like this morning, there were three dead chickens out on one of our paths that were over there. And that comes from three chickens that probably got out yesterday or it might be a raccoon, I forget my predators right now. So, chickens need to stay where chickens need to stay to keep them safe. So this is how the gardens are doing, lots of green tomatoes. Um, this bed in particular, when I water tonight, hopefully I'm able to come out here and do it, I will then pull the grass up from it. All I need to do is mulch the top of these beds some, but again, I either haven't been here or uh, stuff. So. Anyway, we have different plants coming. We have our potatoes coming. This bed is looking sad, so we'll circle back to that. 
didn't mean to give you a whole garden tour right now, but here we are. I did, cause you know, our corn probably isn't gonna be that fantastic. I did go through and plant a bunch of pole beans in here. And my beans that I was concerned that they were bush beans are actually pole beans. And you can see like this one is starting to grab on there. So that's super. There's the pole beans coming up. And then the potatoes. Yes, hi turkeys. Potatoes are looking fantastic. And all the way on down. I hear you guys. So anyway, uh, oh, let's, excuse me. Again, like I said, doing a garden tour. There's another pole bean doing its job. These guys are looking good. Lots of blooms. So we get lots of good things from them soon. I did get, Ooh, and we have some peppers coming on those plants. I got 10 more tomato plants at Walmart the other day. They're not planted yet. They're going to go in here. Uh, we have lots of little nasturtiums coming up. Also, we have lots of uh, radishes planted in the different beds in between things and lots of carrots. Anyway, so I'm going to plant my tomato plants in here. Here are a lot of the radishes. So many people have also asked me about my dirt layers. We started the bottom of all of these with cardboard and then sticks. Just seems to be the standard. And then we had our compost. Our compost mulch is what Travis calls it, but it is just heavy, heavy uh, various animal manures from the last year or so that are dried out. I have in some of these, when we clean our rabbit cage, just put the rabbit cage directly on there. The droppings, because you can do that with rabbit. When I am filming this, it is still very much June, and I am hopeful that between July, August, September, between the next couple months, we will really have some good production out here. That's our goose, goose and turkey. So you can tell I have this one looking nice. I need to try to get that stalk inside. Do have tomatoes on? They do, and this one here has bent out. So just give that a rest inside. Yes, it does, I see, yep, yeah, little tomatoes. And then this one, we're gonna try to gently, ooh, can we do it? Yes, get it in there. But you can see, yeah, the little tomatoes coming. Nice big tomato there. Good things are happening. And we also have had a ton of storms and a ton of rain lately. Okay, so back to us telling you what was on our beds. Our mulch, it's like mostly our compost mulch. And then on the top, we did local topsoil. So that's what's happening in our beds. And I do need to, we need to clean out our rabbit cage again. And then I will get some more goodies from that on the other beds on the top as well thank you daniel i asked daniel i was like could you please go get mommy a chair i thought you'd have to drag it you're so strong okay i just stood here in a stupor but again this is let's get moving get the blood flowing a little bit and this job needs done anyway so here's some proof of our chicken predator we've got feathers here feathers down there and this would have just been one of our buffs that she would have flown and been on the outside of this fence hey Betty how's Margaret doing good hey Sean how you doing buddy you growing little horns on your head now huh he is a wither which means he was castrated when he was very young but he's still taking it upon himself now after all these years to grow some horns on his head okay I'm in here I need my chicken catchers though. Daniel and Betty have been trying. My other chicken catchers are in the pool. So I've had to disturb their pool time to say, come and catch your mama some chickens, please. They can catch them really quick and we can be kind of over and done with this. Uh, so what I'm going to clip is the flight feathers on one wing. I think I said earlier that if I clip both wings, they will actually still learn to fly out with that. And uh, and in their yard here, I mean, they've got like mesh netting and stuff on top, but I still like to let them out every day in a semi-controlled environment. Then there's some smaller feathers closer to the body and those help keep them warm. So we don't want to clip those, but we want to clip the longer flight feathers. And again, it, it'll feel just like a haircut for them, which we also need done today. Daddy can yes, do haircuts. I need a haircut on my hair. You do, yes, I for sure. Swim. And you want to swim. Okay, everything, everything.
So now they have this big area. Of course, Margaret's under the tree. We've just continued to leave this up because it's, it's just such a good shady spot for animals and all of that. It's been down like two years now. We have had no issues with it, but they like to nest around here. You can see there, yes, girl. They're out there up on the hill. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. Look. Okay, this is fun. So in this whole big barnyard, at some point, we obviously fed them some squash or pumpkin, or I'll have to get my picture of this app out. But uh, we have some growing randomly fun. Okay, so it is a wild pumpkin, which is good as any other pumpkin. So yeah, I guess we will try to dig this up and put it in our mm -hmm. watermelon pumpkin patch. That sound good? Yeah. Okay, so now, now, <laughs> get back to, uh, I may not be watering my garden again tonight. It depends on the force of the rain. I mean, if it's a good, good rain, then I let it slide, and we've had a lot of good rain lately. But if it just, you know, comes and goes within 30 minutes, I will still probably water. I just want to make sure that the uh, bags of potatoes and such get it. So it will be a good time this evening, though, to come out and work in these. That'll totally depend on how I'm feeling. So oh, let me give you a little update now while kids aren't interrupting me and uh, it's not raining yet. So back to updates from this week. You know I don't update on everything, but just kind of a... I was doing a week in the life video, so what else happened to the rest of this week? So, when we got home, I had a family member suddenly come down with Bell's palsy on the right side of their face. If you don't know what Bell's palsy is, you can Google it and you'll see pictures. Uh, it was sudden onset, so also in the last several days uh, we have become bell's palsy experts and so we went to the emergency room they did the test to make sure it was not a stroke and it was bell's palsy and uh, we're probably gonna hear thunder too but it feels so good outside right now <laughs> anyway um, they determined it was not a stroke it was bell's palsy and the the standard treatment for that is prednisone and antiviral medication which i've never had anyone in my family on either of those so and it just seemed like that was our best course of action. With this person's Bell's palsy, there's no feeling from the top of the forehead to the bottom of the chin. Um, the eye won't close all the way. When they smile, only half, only the other side of the face smiles. It's all of these nerves here from the seventh cranial nerve. Um, so it's, it was scary. And uh, Bell's palsy can come suddenly from a virus, um, a cold, although no one else in the family had had any of these symptoms, uh, can also come from ticks or other insect bites. This person did have a mosquito bite. Um, so, and then when we went to the chiropractor the following day, um, he was very hopeful. He has treated a lot of Bell's palsy with chiropractic adjustments. So he is of the mind that, um, especially adjusting the neck and the back for the next week or so every day, we should see significant improvement. We already have seen significant improvement. I think we're on, gotta do my days of the week. So yeah, we came home Wednesday and I was already feeling run down like I was gonna rest a day or two. But as soon as I dropped people off at home and we were flipping around, going to the ER, and then that was all, you know, Thursday morning, probably got to bed about three, Thursday then, was running all day to appointments and such and then Friday and then Friday was kind of a feeling like I really needed rest our family needed rest Saturday I was all out with this cold today here we are um, and the individual with the Bell's palsy they were very swollen the swelling has gone down significantly 
they still cannot close the eye. It's not fixed, but the swelling is down. So thank you, prednisone, I'm sure. And we'll continue on from there. So just some of the unexpected life stuff that happens. Alrighty guys, so it is definitely rated hard outside. And so I'm uh, I'm about to go, <laughs> I say about to, it might take an hour, but I'm gonna show you this broccoli and these cherries. I watched through the John Adams HBO miniseries <laughs> from like 2008. I watched through it every year. So this weekend has been my annual watch through of it. I'm feeling kind of puny and that's what, uh, once we do some lunch things here, that's what I'm gonna do hopefully for several hours. But what about this broccoli and these cherries? If I could get these washed and prepped today and in the freezer, and I mean prepped, I have to cut the broccolis down smaller. And I'm guessing I have to slice the cherries in half maybe. Uh, that would be weird to freeze dry them with the pit. So all that to say, if I could get uh, get these washed after my couple hour rest up break and uh, on the freezer trays tonight, that will, that will be good. That's kind of my goal for the rest of the day. We also have these cotton candy grapes from Costco. Uh, so I'm gonna wash these and give these to the kids with lunch. They could still finish the cherries. We've had the cherries for over a week and I think they ate three other bags of them. So I just see that interest is lacking. What a great reason to put those through the freeze dryer. A lot of times I say, well, you can't have the cotton candy grapes until you finish, until we work through these cherries. But we have the freeze dryer now and I want to continue to preserve stuff. So sounds like a good enough reason to me. So I'm gonna get these washed and give these to them with their lunch as well. Alrighty, today is obviously a different day. And I'm going, <laughs> what am I doing in this week in life? Well, I'm going to be filming a garage, or I should say kitchen update video. But I'm gonna give you just a little bit of it here in this video as well. But in the next garage to kitchen conversion video, I believe, I've been gathering these clips for weeks now, it's the whole floor install and it's the cabinets being delivered. It might even be, was it when they were painting or did I include that in the last video? There's been a lot that I've been gathering in the next garage update video. So I don't know what comes first, the chicken or the egg. What'll come first, the garage update video or this, uh, maybe I should just give up week of the life, but things look a little brighter here. We have had cabinet things that are being worked on today and our wonderful team of happy helpers have left. You can see cold update. I still have my stupid cold. It's getting better, you know, but a uh, person with the Bell's palsy situation, we were in for doctor appointment this morning. We're heading to a chiropractor appointment this afternoon and we will be going to Lowe's. So this was the first day that our wonderful contractor contracting crew was here putting together the drawing that Lowe's did the best they could from December and also checking all the cabinets that were delivered a few days ago and just kind of, you know, lining everything up, right? Cause like Travis said, you said, it's not like a Lego set. Like it doesn't, you know, so we have to build it, make it up as we go, build it how we want. And so a good bit of that is staying exactly how it was. A couple things, we've had to do a few adjustments, but nothing earth shattering. And so when they went through all the cabinets today, there were four that were damaged, which I think is actually a really low number with how many cabinets we have all around us. Four were damaged, and then it turns out three we don't really need. Okay, so we're returning the damaged cabinets. We're returning seven boxes of cabinets total. Does it take up the whole back of the van? Yeah, pretty pretty much, good thing. Good thing we got our van back after two months. That's another praise. And then uh, another praise is the list of cabinets that we needed replaced, that we didn't know we needed. And like now there's an area where we need a 12 inch cabinet that wasn't on the plan before. They have all those in stock. And Vernon at Lowe's has all those pulled for us. Thank you, Vernon. And that's our other builder. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I just paused. I looked at Travis. Both adults were inside and some kids are outside and I hear an electric saw and I'm like, nothing makes sense for a moment. Our bathroom is being repaired in the basement. Have I included any of that in this video? I don't know if I have. 
<laughs> See if you can tell me what video that has been in. There's the saw again. That's a licensed contractor fixing another thing and that's allowed. <laughs> Real quick, I was like, uh, what project is happening and why are you in front of me? That is something completely different. And no, we would not have saws available that kids could access. And there's Roger from Lowe's texting me. Uh, but still, that is the noise of the saw. So let me see what we're saying from Lowe's. All right, and Roger at Lowe's was checking in on us and how things are going. Our small town Lowe's is invested in this project. They are excited. So they've been helping us along the way. I'm gonna save a lot of the kitchen tour and how things are going for the kitchen update video, but I will give you all a sneak peek or an old peek if you've already seen this. But you will be going into Lowe's with me tonight. We get our cabinets switched out. Other things that are happening, we're scheduled for the countertop company to come out. And uh, of course we've got to finish this. But anyway, good things are happening kitchen wise. Person who needs multiple medical things right now is getting that. And I have not put the trays of broccoli in the freeze dryer yet that I got into the freezer yesterday. We'll probably get the freeze dryer turned on and going when we get home this evening and get those trays going at bedtime. So it seems like a good time to get the freeze dryer running, so why not? Okay, friends, but here is the island underway, and here is one of the sinks. I'm super, just so super excited. Now, this will actually set down in the countertop, right, Trev? Part of it. Part of this. This... This is temporary. This is just for us eyeballing it. Back in the set, sit on top of the counter. Okay, okay. There, there's stuff happening there. Uh, this is where we need the 12 inch cabinet. Uh, let's see. Dishwashers are still on back order, but they're supposed to be here next week, so that's good. And this is where another dishwasher will go. And then the other cabinet. This is one that we'll pick up tonight, but exciting things are happening. Okay, so they knew I was coming. They got my name on it in the front of the store. They helped me get my other cabinets out of the van. So here's the cabinets that we brought back, taking up room at Lowe's. I have a countertop question I'm gonna run back for while they're working on my order. All right, so we just got loaded up here just see my big shadow but anyway so we're going home with our new cabinets we needed two of those 12 inch bases a bunch of other ones in there yay yay big van it uh has a little magnet it holds it on on the side so whoops and it has these little arms that come out so that i can swing the doors all the way back and i forget that gotta put it back in there okay all right, yay. The, and uh, we need a car wash. <laughs> oh, shut all the way. Okay. I will not give them a heart attack. I will put that back on the floor. But anyway, I just was trying to get a visual for it. So this will be up higher. I think it'll work. And then I'm going to need a little step stool, step ladder in this kitchen anyway, so it would be natural to keep one right here. Of course, we'll have a countertop here, ice maker, and then cup cabinet, yes. I have no real plans and no idea yet where I'm actually keeping things, so I should probably get a clue with that. Maybe it would make sense over here. Uh, that this, this probably won't open now that I've got a cabinet on it, but it might make sense that this is the silverware drawer. Although there's gonna be a lot of traffic here. I mean, this whole thing, those are the shelves for um, underneath, by the way. And any edges you see, that's the protective sticker on there still. So the whole stove is gonna be here. And so, I mean, all the pots and pans aren't gonna fit there. I've been looking at racks and things on Amazon. I don't wanna hang, uh, of course we're gonna have lights over here. I do have room here. I could do a hanging rack there. I just, you know, we're gonna do a lot of filming, so I don't, don't know that I'm gonna do that, but 
I could actually, hey Travis, is this a fig? I could do a hanging rack here. If I did, you know, a pot, like a big pots and pans hanging rack, they are on the ceiling. Thank you. Because the stove will be there. There's not gonna be a lot of room here. Well, it's up in the air. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You know what? The reviews that I read, a lot of them say you need like a nine or ten foot ceiling to really do it. We only, we're only eight foot in here, aren't we? Okay, maybe I'm not doing that. Anyway, there's options. I know it's going to stretch beyond this. I mean, I have this one. Let's see here. Can I get things open? That's opening that way. Well, I don't know if that can be switched out with a different one or if that's just how it is or if that hardware, I don't think that hardware could be moved. Okay, we won't worry about that. Whole point being, I guess if they're all open, uh, I could keep pots and pans in these two. They'll each have a shelf. And I was just thinking of all the various cooking utensils that I have jammed in two broken drawers right now. Could be in this silverware in there, but it almost feels like our silverware is taken on a mind of its own. I almost want, you know, want like this to be for silverware. That could be my junk drawer. That's important, huh? Uh, then over here, so we have this Lazy Susan. Won't think about that right now. That's pretty sm small as far as silverware drawer. My other, so over here I'll have two, two different 36 inch drawers. So let's see, that's got a box sitting on it. So over here, could have a silverware drawer. And then right up here, we're gonna have like coffee, tea, drink station. So, so maybe that makes sense. You know, it's kind of like a house. You gotta live in it a little bit, see what makes sense, see what works. Again, can we just, can we just visit these nice deep drawers? I remember ordering these, you know, I mean, we did sit there and work on the little design on his computer and everything, but they didn't actually like have these there for me to look at. So I just would like to write a poem to my nice deep drawers. You know, I haven't opened these lower ones. What do these look like in action? Well, they're just as lovely. Lots of nice room there. And then for these, lots of nice room. So exciting stuff. Uh, anyway, these are just some of my thoughts this evening. So I have pots and pans room there. I can put things that I don't necessarily use weekly, like a walk. I mean, those kind of things could be over there. I do plan on keeping a decent amount of, you know, slow cookers, bread machines, those kind of things. I can't actually keep, that's what this whole quarter is supposed to be useful for. And then the stove will be big enough that like when something's done cooking or what have you, I can just move it to another burner. Even if I have other projects going on on the stove, it has nine burners. There should be plenty of room for all of that going on. I think I've seen somewhere here some good ideas about like storing baking things in these drawers. Like when you open it up, almost like a little filing rack. I don't know, cause you know, I like big baking pans and I cannot lie. So we shall see, but there will, there will be a home for everything. Again, Google, 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 the Google. Take out my ups and my coffee. I'm gonna say little words and have big, big pauses, big figuring out pauses. Uh, 